Now we are discussing the pattern based design. We have discussed design. But what do we mean when we say pattern? Pattern means something which is uh, repeatable and it is perceivable. You can reuse it, you can apply it, already available. So design patterns, each of us has encountered a design problem. And silently, we have already and always asked, I wonder if anyone has developed a solution to or for this. Do we have something uh, or some solution which is which is uh, solving this, this problem or my problem in general? So what if there was a standard way of describing a problem? So uh, you could look it up and uh, an organized method for presenting the solution to the problem. So this design pattern are a codified method for describing problems and also their solution, which allows the software engineering community to capture design knowledge in a way that enable it to be reused. So I would like you to just understand that the design patterns or any patterns, you know, we have seen the patterns. If you have your, you know, in your house, you might have your ceiling or say floor. You might have seen some tiles like this. So they are following certain pattern. And when you combine them, they look like a complete, uh, repeatable, beautiful shade of color and uh, say texture. So this is the pattern. Now, one tile can be reused. One tile in the similar form, in the same similar shape, and it, it gives rise to a whole bunch of your wall means completes your wall look and feel an organization also so what i want you to understand is that the design patterns anything any anything which can be reused is the pattern design pattern means anything which is used for, for that for complementing or supporting your design not uh, getting into the the details or you know reinvention of wheel kind of thing just you have something you just take it and you're good to go so the design pattern, Christopher Alexander, he characterized these uh, problems, recurring problems, you know, that uh, if your uh, bike or car is giving you a starting trouble, then the problem may be in the filter or maybe in, uh, say, your battery. Okay. So whenever these problems are there, you know, starting problem of your car or bike, you know that the problem may be in, the, in these two things only. So there, there are problems which are with everyone. Whosoever is designing, he will come across some problems which are common to everyone. So these are recurring problems and their solutions have already been already been carried out. They have already been sought out. They have already been created. So these are the patterns and describing them in this manner, what Alexander has to offer is that each pattern describes a problem that occurs over and over again in our environment then describes the core of the solution to that problem in such a way that you can use the solution a million times over without ever doing it in the same way twice, right? You go to a company X, if your problem is in, uh, say, in, in this or that, they're going to see both of them and try to mitigate or solve the problem. You can go to company Y, they're going to do the same way, but maybe, uh, they, these companies may do things in other way. They are going to solve the solve this problem only. Your starting problem, but maybe in some different way. One may say, okay, you come tomorrow. I'll give you this bike or car. Somebody will say, okay, just please sit down for a second, have a nice cup of uh, tea or coffee, and just give us a few minutes, and uh, we'll get back to you with your running car or bike. So this is these are the way you know in which things can be done. So design pattern can be characterized as a three-part rule, three-part rule, which expresses a relationship between certain context, a problem, and a solution. So there are certain basic concepts for software design. Context allows the reader to understand the environment in which the problem resides and what solution might be appropriate within that environment. So a set of requirements, including the limitations and constraints, it acts as a system of forces that influence how the problem can be interpreted within its context and how the solution can be effectively applied. So, what do we mean when we say we have the effective patterns? So, Copelian, he characterizes an effective design pattern in this way that an effective pattern means it should solve the problem. It is a proven concept. The solution isn't obvious and it describes a relationship and the pattern has a significant human component. That is, it uh, minimizes the human intervention, but still it has some human component. We uh, 
call certain patterns as generative patterns which means which is actually repeatable aspect of a system and then these generative patterns which describe an important repeatable aspect of a system they provide us with a way to build that aspect within a system of forces that are unique to a given context unique to a given context so a collection of uh, generative design patterns could be used to generate an application or a computer based system whose architecture enables it to adapt to change so there there are kinds of patterns variety of patterns like the architectural pattern data pattern component patterns and interface design patterns so in, in this architectural patterns they describe broad based design problems that are solved using a structural approach the data pattern describes the recurring data oriented problems and data modeling solution that can be used to solve them the component patterns which are also known as the design patterns they address problems associated with the development of subsystem and components and the manner in which they communicate with one another and their placement within a larger architecture the interface design pattern this describes common user interface problems and their sort of solution with a system of forces that includes the specific characteristics of end users then we have the web app patterns they address a problem set that is encountered when building web apps and often incorporates many of other uh, patterns category we just mentioned and the creational problem uh, pattern the pattern for creations of stuff it focus on the creation composition and representation of objects and the structural patterns they focus on problems and solutions associated with how classes and objects are organized and integrated to build a larger structure the behavioral patterns addresses problems associated with the assignment of responsibility between objects and the manner in which the communication is effected between the objects when it comes to frameworks patterns themselves may not be sufficient to develop a complete design okay let me uh, reiterate the patterns themselves are not sufficient to develop a complete design in certain cases it may be necessary to provide an implementation specific skeleton infrastructure which could be called as a framework for design work that is uh, we can select a reusable mini architecture that provide the generic structure and behavior for a family of uh, software abstractions along with the context which specifies their collaboration and use of or use within the given domain so a framework is not an architectural pattern please understand a framework is not an architectural pattern but rather a skeleton with a collection of plug points also called the hooks the slot that enable it to be adapted to a specific problem domain so the plug points enable us to integrate problem specific classes or functionality within this skeleton so gamma and his colleagues describe the differences between the design patterns and the framework these frameworks are design pattern they said design patterns are more abstract than frameworks so frameworks can be embodied in a code but only examples of pattern can be embodied in the code a strength of framework is that they can be written down in programming languages and not only studied but executed and reused directly the design patterns are small or smaller architectural elements than the frameworks and a typical framework contains several design patterns but the reverse is never true design patterns are less specialized than frameworks so framework always have a particular application domain in contrast the design pattern can be used in nearly any kind of application while uh, more specialized design patterns are certainly possible even these wouldn't dictate us or dictate an application architecture so how to describe a pattern to describe a pattern we can have these characteristics or the keys uh, with certain values which we can write like the pattern name the problem the motivation the context the forces the solution the intent the collaborations the consequences the implementation the known uses and the related patterns now when we are talking about pattern we need to understand the languages also so what do we mean by languages pattern languages so a pattern language encompasses a collection of pattern each described using a standardized template and interrelated to show how these pattern collaborate to solve problems across an application domain so a pattern language is analogous to a hypertext instruction manual for problem solving in a specific application domain and the problem domain under consideration is first described hierarchically beginning with the broad design um, problems which are associated with the domain and then refining each of the broad problems into lower levels of abstraction so pattern based software design the best designer in any field 
have some uncanny ability to see the patterns that characterize a problem and corresponding patterns that can be combined to create a solution. So that software developers at uh, Microsoft will discuss this with the right while pattern based design is relatively new in the field of software development. Industrial technology have used pattern based design for decades and perhaps even centuries. So catalogs of mechanisms, the standard configuration provide design elements that are used to engineer automobiles, aircraft, machine tools and robots. So applying patterns based design to software development promises the same benefit to software as it does to industry technology, predictability, risk mitigation and increased productivity. In the pattern based design, a software designer begins with a requirement model. This is the requirement model. It can be implicit or explicit or implied that, repre that presents an abstract representation of the system. Then the requirement model describes the problem set, establishes the context and identifies the system of forces that hold sway. Here the design becomes or begins. We consider the design concepts, extract problems and or context forces, consider the design quality attribute, address them with the pattern. If yes, okay, otherwise we apply other design methods and notation, but if it can be addressed by a pattern, we begin pattern based design task. So how can we think in patterns? So shallow uh, way in short suggests that we have certain approach that enable a designer to think in patterns. Be sure you understand the big picture, examine the big picture, begin your design with big picture pattern, work inward from the context and repeat these steps until the design complete or design complete design is fleshed out and refine the design by adapting each pattern to the to the specifics of the software you are trying to build. So what are the design tasks in pattern designing? We have um, design tasks that are applied when the pattern based design philosophy is used. We examine the requirements model and develop a problem, problem hierarchy. Then we determine if a reliable pattern language has been developed for the problem domain. And beginning with this broad problem, we determine whether one or more architectural patterns are available for it. And using the collaboration provided for the architectural pattern, we examine subsystem and component level problems and search for appropriate patterns to address them. And we repeat these steps until all broad problems have been addressed. Then if the user interface design problems have been isolated, you know, most of the cases, this is the case. So search. We search the many user interface design pattern repositories for appropriate patterns and regardless of the level of abstraction, if a pattern language or a pattern repository or individual patterns show promise, we compare the problem to be solved against the existing patterns which are presented and we make or be certain to refine the design as it is derived from patterns using design quality criteria as a guide. This is the pattern organizing table may it be data content, architecture, component level or user interface. We try to see the database, application, implementation and infrastructure concepts and we say whether we have a pattern for certain problem statement. So here we fill it up. The common design mistakes are not enough time has been spent to understand the underlying problem first of all, its context and forces and as a result, we select a pattern that looks right but is inappropriate for the solution required. Once the wrong pattern is selected, we refuse to see the error or force fit the pattern. In other cases, the, the problem has forces that are not considered by the pattern. We have chosen a resulting in a poor or erroneous fit. Sometimes a pattern is applied too literally and required adaptation for your problem space are not even implemented. Then we come to an important aspect that is the architectural pattern. So let us take an example that every house, you know, may be any architecture style will, will employ certain kitchen or bathroom. Okay. So a kitchen pattern and patterns, it collaborates with the addressed uh, problems associated with the storage and preparation of food and the tools required to accomplish these tasks. And the rules for placement of these tools related to workflow in the room. In addition to that, the pattern might address problems associated with the countertops, the lighting, the wall switches and central island flooring and so on. Obviously, there is more than a single design for a kitchen, often dictated by the context and the system of forces or, or the utilization. But every design can be conceived within the context of the solution suggested by the kitchen pattern. So there are many resources, we call them as pattern repository, for design pattern available on the web. Some patterns can be obtained from individually published pattern languages, while others are available as part of pattern portal or patterns repository. 
Then we come to the component level patterns. So component level design patterns provide a proven solution that addresses one or more sub problems extracted from the requirement model. In many cases, these design patterns focus on some functional elements of a system. For example, we have just you know talked about in the previous section safe home issued. This application must address the uh, design sub problem like how can we get product specification and related information for any safe home device. So having enunciated the sub problem that can be solved, we consider the context and the system of forces that affect the solution. So examining the appropriate requirements model use case, the specification for safe home device, say for example security sensor or a camera, is used for information purposes by the consumer. However, the other information that is related to the specification, for example, pricing may be used when e-commerce uh, functionality is selected. So the solution to the sub problems involves a search. So search is, is a very common problem. It should come as no surprise that there are many search related patterns. Then we come to user interface pattern. Hundreds of user interface patterns have been proposed in recent years and uh, they fall in most of them fall in 10 categories of patterns described by Tidwell and Van Willey. Whole user interface, page layout, forms and inputs, tables, data, ma data manipulation, direct data manipulation, delegation, searching, page elements and e-commerce. Then the web app patterns, the design focus in this web pattern. The web app patterns can be categorized using certain levels of design focus. Of course, the information architecture patterns, the navigation pattern, the interaction patterns, the presentation patterns, the functional patterns and these all describe and design that what could be the design aspect which is already being done by somebody. In the design granularity that is in the terms of levels of uh, the details, the patterns can be described at the uh, different levels like architectural pattern, design pattern or component pattern. So we already seen these so architectural pattern, these are the level of abstraction. This will typically relate to patterns that define the overall structure of the web app. Indicate the relationship among different uh, components and implements and define the rules for specifying relationship among the elements like the pages, packages, components, subsystems of the architecture. And design patterns, these address a specific element of the design such as an aggregation of components to solve some design problem. Relationship among elements on a page or the mechanism for affecting component to component communication. An example might be the broad sheet pattern or the layout of the web app home page say. In the component patterns, this level of abstraction relate to individual small scale elements of a web app. So this example include individual interaction elements like radio buttons or text box, navigation items like how might you format the links or functional requirements, certain specific algorithms. So this was about the pattern or design uh, using the pattern. Thank you so much.